I'm Bob Carney Jr., moderate progressive Republican candidate for mayor of Minneapolis. In this video, I'm presenting a plan for a new kind of infrastructure I'm advocating for the city, something I call the Sky Buy. We'll start with some historical background growing outward from the Minneapolis Milling District, then we'll look at the plan. From its beginning, the history of Minneapolis has featured a unique bonding of transportation and parks. The Stone Arch Bridge embodies this history. It started out as the first rail link between St. Paul and Minneapolis, crossing just downstream from St. Anthony Falls. Today the Stone Arch Bridge is part of our park system, a bike and pedestrian bridge linking both banks of the historic Minneapolis Milling District, and a commuter route between Minneapolis and the University. In the big picture of our city history, we see other links between our transportation system and our park system. Minneapolis started out as both a unique source of hydropower and a transportation bottleneck. This power tower near the new Guthrie Theater gives us a clue about how much energy is here. Today the hydro facility produces up to 30 megawatts of electricity. It took 2 megawatts to run the entire Pillsbury A mill, back when Pillsbury A was the largest flour mill in the world. St. Anthony Falls was the inevitable destination for raw materials, logs and wheat, coming from all points north and west. These raw materials could be milled with the abundant hydropower and then shipped to all navigable points in the Mississippi River Basin. This unique geography, abundant energy and bottled up raw materials drove a decades-long milling boom of both logs and grain. Our park system was developed from the get-go as a system. It was planned by people who thought ahead a hundred years. The plan that emerged was a unique combination of dedication to being good stewards of the earth and real estate speculation. As this system was built, we can see the kind of attitude and thinking that grew into the progressive movement in the early 1900s. Here's an excerpt from a documentary series I'm working on called Escape from History presenting the report of the new Minneapolis Park Board's first consultant, Professor H.W.S. Cleveland. If you have faith in the future greatness of your city, do not shrink from securing while you may such areas as will be adequate to the wants of such a city. Do not be appalled at the thought of appropriating lands which seem now too costly simply because they are far out of proportion to your present wants. Look forward for a century to the time when the city has a population of a million and think what will be their wants. They will have wealth enough to purchase all that money can buy, but all their wealth cannot purchase a lost opportunity or restore natural features of grandeur and beauty, which would then possess priceless value and which you can preserve for them if you will but say the word and save them from the destruction which certainly awaits them if you fail to utter it. This attitude, more than any specific feature of any plan, is what brought to Minneapolis the blessing of our park system. What can we do today to bring more blessings to people 100 years from now? We'll be looking at two presentations, one at a public hearing considering different routes for the Southwest Light Rail Line. The second is at the Wade Park Community Fall Festival in Northeast Minneapolis. Here's the video from the hearing. Give her for me and just point this at me. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. My name is Bob Carney Jr. I am a moderate progressive Republican candidate for mayor of Minneapolis, someone between endangered and extinct. And you've heard, I, I bet a lot of you have heard a lot of these things before, but this is something that you haven't heard. I'm going to show this to the audience first and then tell you about it. We're at Wake Park in northeast Minneapolis, and it looks like everyone's thinking transit this year. I think I'm on camera. It's on. Minneapolis candidates were invited to speak at the Wake Park Community Council Fall Festival. On transportation, we have a unique park system, and I want to build on that by developing an infrastructure that I call the Sky Buy, and I've got a map here. The idea is to have an elevated, all-season, bike and Segway and scooter and electric wheelchair Skyway paths, and what I have here is an initial route. It's not going to cover all of Minneapolis. 
but I met with one of the city planners, uh, and he said that for an initial system, these routes are uh, right where they should be. He used the phrase right on the money. Here's how this would work. Uh, you'd have one route that would go from the Milling District down the Nicollet Mall to the Convention Center, then over the 35 corridor to the Greenway. And it would go uh, down the Greenway uh, to link up with both of the light rails, uh, the Hiawatha Line and the New Southwest Line. That's going to come in west of Lake Calhoun. Then there would be another intersecting route that would go from what I call Twinsville uh, over to the, uh, the Dome and then over to the University. One key point about the Skyby is that it will use elevators, not ramps, to connect to ground level. Here's what I told the Hennepin County Commissioners about that at the hearing. It would be connected to ground level by elevators rather than by hairpin and kind of ramps you go downtown and back to the Hiawatha uh, to get over to the Hiawatha Avenue. Does that look a little silly to you? It does to me. Isn't it better to go up 30 feet on an elevator rather than go over and back a city block. Let's look more closely at some of the underlying ideas behind the sky bar. So the idea here is to have an infrastructure that will make it possible for people that live in this triangle from the Greenway uh, to the uh, southwest line to Hiawatha to downtown to be able to get to this nexus of locations uh, such that People that are living in that area uh, could get by with either one less car or could get by with no car. And for that reason, I think that this thing can be paid for with tax increment financing. This is a way of starting to build an infrastructure that gets us away from cars. Let's consider how the Skyby will promote economic development. I want to point out one other thing in terms of economic development. This route will go by the convention center. And as a result, people will be able to rent segways, rent bikes. Let's keep in mind that our new light rail system is designed to make it easy to roll on and off the cars. We're heading toward a transportation system where people can roll on and off the bus, the light rail, and now the skyby. I've been getting ready for this at home with a new ramp for my front lawn that links my porch to the driveway. All of this fits together into a system where convention goers have links to all the trails that go to downtown and links to our park system. So if you have a convention, people that are going to that convention can get on this system anytime during the year, meaning we can have conventions during the wintertime, and they can also link up with our park system. So I think that this would be a tremendous way of introducing people to Minneapolis in a unique way. I just want to let you know that I'm going to be advocating for this, and I hope that you'll factor this into your consideration. Here's more to consider about economic development. As you've already heard, the Skyby plan includes a link along the Greenway from the Hiawatha Line to the new Southwest Line. The emerging preferred route for the Southwest Light Rail Line is along the Kenilworth Trail, north from Lake Street, east of Cedar Lake, to downtown. A streetcar line is being proposed to link up the Southwest Line with the Hiawatha Line along the Greenway. There is already a lot of development along the Greenway. With both the Skyby and a Greenway streetcar line, Lake Street and the Greenway will become both a residential and commercial backbone of a truly unique combination of transit and parks. That's the plan, but what about all of our current economic problems? Is this the right time to do this? Downtown Minneapolis got a big boost from tax increment financing. The equivalent of that, a special assessment district, can build the sky by. When you consider the benefits and the economic development that would result, here's the bottom line. We can't afford to wait. Historically, the progressive movement in the United States was overwhelmingly Republican. Charles Lindbergh's father, the aviator's father, was a Republican congressman from Minnesota. I think we need to take a look at some of those principles that progressive Republicans advocated back then.